it up. How's it going everybody, Adbricker here, and this video is about the Insta360 Go 2 and how I use it with FPV. In my case, FPV drones, and also Shelby Vol using it with his FPV wing, which works really, really well. First of all, you have to shoot in pro video mode, not in video mode. Now, in other instances, if you're holding this, hand holding it, sticking it to your car, windshield, whatever, maybe it's not such a big deal, but with the small, fast oscillations of an FPV quad, you need to use pro video mode. Video mode itself is not going to be a good experience for you. It's gonna look terrible. Uh, pro video mode is gonna allow you to use both the FPV stabilization as well as the flow state, which you can use for horizon leveling, which is a pretty cool effect in and of itself. Usually I'd turn horizon leveling off and make sure that it looks still like FPV with the banking turns and the rolls and the flips that we're used to. In my review that I posted about a month ago, I noticed I was getting some oscillations when using this with a five inch quad. And this is the mount that I was using. Just something I found on Thingiverse that I printed uh, with my 3D printer. However, my friend Matt McConnell made this mount for me and it actually works a little bit better. It's kind of a hovering mount on the Marmot, the Armiton Marmot, so that the TPU plastic is kind of hovering with the O-rings and the O-rings are actually supporting the weight of the Go 2. This way we're getting rid of a lot more oscillation uh, as it kind of travels up the mount into the Go 2 camera. And that's a big thing about the Insta360 Go 2. You need to make sure that whatever mount you're using with an FPV drone it's going to get rid of all those oscillations. Now, when I made my video last month, I thought that maybe the lower the prop size, the better it would be, the less likely you would need something like that. However, I was using the HGLRC Sector 4, which I still need to make a review for, waiting on some special parts, and the video looked terrible. And this was surprising to me because I thought as I got smaller in prop size, uh, it would be better. Smaller oscillations perhaps, uh, it might show up a little bit less. And in fact, when I was using this with the Beta FPV Beta 95 XV3, I didn't really see any of those oscillations. So I thought, well, those are very much smaller prop sizes. Perhaps a four inch would work better than a five inch. Not the case. So here is a four inch quad with just a standard thingiverse mount. And here is the four inch quad with a special Insta360 designed mount for the Go 2. You can find that in the video description. And this mount can be used on a lot of different types of mounting styles or you know, mounting adapters. And it actually got rid of the oscillations the most out of anything I've been trying. With the Beta FPV, uh, Beta 95 XV3, I can still use this special mount. Um, and it's not really special, I just found it on Thingiverse. Seems to work fine uh, with the smaller props and the ducted uh, propellers and everything, the ducted motors. So the key here is to have a very soft mounted option, whether it's soft mounted with thin TPU or with some of those O-rings as you increase in prop size. Finally, another improvement would be to add neutral density filters, but neutral density filters will darken uh, the, the camera darken the image and then the camera is going to auto compensate if you have auto exposure turned on by lowering the shutter speed to brighten up the image. Lower shutter speed also improves some of these oscillations. So even with Matt's uh, special O-ring mount on the Marmot, the five inch Armiton Marmot, I was still getting some oscillation without the neutral density filter. And you can see that with a little bit of a jello -y oscillation on the sides of the video here. But as you uh, put a neutral density filter on there, it really seems to improve that too. However, if the oscillations are too bad, then a low shutter speed will actually result in a blurry image after the stabilization has gone through its process. Low shutter speed can only take care of so much oscillation. My favorite settings for FPV freestyle using the Go 2 is 1440p at 30 frames a second with the ND16 if it's sunny out or maybe an ND8 or ND4 if it's not quite as sunny or you know overcast with auto exposure turned on. But this brings me to Shelby Vol, a uh, wing pilot who is uh, featured on my channel here and there and I see him almost every weekend. And so we put the Go 2 on his FPV wing and that was amazing. There's no soft mount, he just slapped it on with some tape and then went and flew. The more forward you have it on the wing, the less likely you are to see the nose of the aircraft. So here he is ripping it around and um, he seems to really love it. Unfortunately, 
we lost an aircraft that he was flying with the Go-2. So actually, I'm now go to list. I don't have the Go-2 currently in my possession. Either way, it seems like the Insta360 Go-2 works great for FPV wings. And if you go on there, like, you know, different FPV wing uh, Facebook groups, you'll see a lot more posts recently using the Go-2. Now, still, ultimately, what I think, you know, we're trying to make this work with FPV, and especially when we're talking about wings, you got to take into consideration battery life of the go-to. So that's going to be the limiting factor in a lot of ways. You can record longish clips. Um, you know, it's got 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Uh, I guess realistically 28 gigabytes. The battery life will suffer. And so if you have an extended FPV flight session, like on a wing, and wings can be up for 20 some plus minutes, you might come back and realize, oh, the camera shut off before I landed. Uh, just keep that in consideration. Always keep your charge case handy and offload the footage whenever you can. So, as I mentioned, we lost the Go-2 on an FPV wing aircraft recently, but I did save my footage that I took beforehand by going into the Insta360 app beforehand and downloading it from the camera. If I hadn't done that, then this particular clip right here would be lost forever. Unfortunately, Shelby's flights were lost forever, unless someone finds it and, you know, somehow tracks us down. Now, when exporting using the Insta360 Studio software, I don't normally use the Vivid color profile. I keep it normal. I noticed Vivid kind of makes it too contrasty, a little bit too saturated, and when you're in a sunny environment outside, that really starts looking kind of weird. Uh, the highlights get blown out. It looks really yellowish and kind of gross. So I try and keep it just normal and I export in ProRes quality. Remember, if you're shooting in 1440p with the Go 2, you also want to make sure that you upload to uh, you know, YouTube at 1440p, which you can. Um, don't get stuck uploading and in 1080 and then playback is stuck on 1080 on YouTube So if you export this from Insta360 Studio software to Premiere make, make sure your Premiere export settings are also 1440p just like your import ultimately I probably wouldn't use this for FPV in the long run for drones I think that there might be better options like a DK Hero 8 or something like that a little bit more functionality You can use real steady you can really lock it in with the stabilization and the color science of GoPro just cannot be beat, at least not by Insta360 Go 2 at this current moment in time. But if you're using this with FPV Wing, that's a different story. And I think that Shelby might attest that a Go 2 taped to a FPV Wing is actually really good. So check the link in the video description to the Go 2 by Insta360. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And until next time, happy flying.